Hello, welcome back. So now we've looked in a little bit um, and reminded ourselves of what a linear system is. So the natural next question is, what on earth is a nonlinear system? And um, for the purpose of this course, a nonlinear system is going to be as follows. So for the purposes of this course, a nonlinear system is going to be a differential equation on the following general form. It's going to be x dot is equal to f of x u y is equal to g of x u. And here u, x and y all have exactly the same interpretations as in the linear case. So they're the input state and output just as before. Everything can be vectors just as before. The only difference is we've replaced the matrices A, B, C, and D with these general functions F and G. Um, we already saw some examples of nonlinear systems introducing nonlinear behaviors, and actually those equations were not written in this form. So we've got a little bit of work to do to connect what we saw at the beginning with what we saw here, but it turns out, and we'll see fairly soon, that all of those um, nonlinear systems can be put into this general form. Um, and then this is, in fact, a really pretty general class. It's not the most general, as with any mathematical discipline uh, or a discipline with mathematical connections. We've not even, we're not even scratching the surface in terms of like how general we could make this. But in terms of describing um, phenomena that you see in the world, this is extremely general and will be more than broad enough for our purposes. Um, and just like we introduced last time with the linear system, um, th the right way to think about this equation is really uh, in terms of a mapping from initial conditions and inputs into outputs and values of x into the future. So this is just a, it's really just a prediction tool about the world. Given particular initial conditions and particular inputs, it will make some prediction about what is going to happen into the future. Um, so if we just write on our initial condition again here, uh, we can think of this in a mapping in exactly the same way. Um, and so, yeah, we go from our initial condition, so our value of the state at time t is equal to zero, our set of inputs u, and our differential equation will make some prediction about what x is going to be and y is going to be. Um, in the future. Uh, unlike in the linear system case, there'll be no nice formula for what x and y will be. And in fact, um, you're uh, generally forced to simulate. So there's no nice formula. Which really means that you need to simulate. And a lot of analysis of nonlinear systems really boils down to you, you can rarely avoid getting your hands dirty and doing some simulations. And this is going to, something that we're going to encourage you to do a lot during this course. Um, and in fact, we've developed a, a bunch of uh, simple computer exercises corresponding to those three nonlinear behavior examples that we in, uh, introduced before um, that you can go and build for yourself and simulate their behaviors using Simulink, which is a MATLAB toolbox designed precisely to simulate general the behavior of general systems. And I really encourage you to do this. You'll get so much more from a course on nonlinear systems if you get your hands dirty or as dirty as you're going to get and uh, sit down at a computer and um, uh, simulate some trajectories. Um, so we have no nice formula. And there's also a few other sort of maybe not important, but a few other differences from the linear setting. Um, and these are largely technical problems, um, but it's actually not guaranteed just by writing things on this nice simple form that this mapping even exists. So mapping might not exist. And this sounds very alarming uh, when you, you first hear it. I mean, uh oh, yeah, just this little bit of extra generality, and now we don't even know if we can find any solutions. Um, but this is really a mathematical problem. It's not a problem in any real engineering sense. If you write down a sensible 
model for a system, be it linear or nonlinear. Um, if that model is sensible, it will make some predictions about what happens in the future. Um, so the kinds of situations where the mapping might not exist, they're really very academic. They're not going to come up in practice. So we're not really going to focus on them very much in this course. It's important to know that there might be problems that mean your model, if you write it down in this form, it might not be able to make any predictions into the future. But if you write down anything sensible, um, this will never be a problem. Um, but it's nevertheless maybe interesting to see um, what types of things can go wrong. So this problem of existence um, can actually be uh, demonstrated with a very simple nonlinear system. So let's say x dot is equal to x squared. And we'll just set some initial condition here. So we've got no inputs to this system, but it's clearly of this form here, with u is equal to zero. Here our function is just x squared. So what happens if we simulate this? Well, depending on the initial condition, so here we've got time, here we've got our value of x, our initial condition is something like this, x naught. Um, and the solution will actually demonstrate this phenomenon called finite escape time. So the solution will actually look something like this for this initial condition, and it actually asymptotes up here. And similarly, if I start with a different initial condition, it will go along a little bit longer, uh, but eventually it'll shoot off and go to infinity. So this differential equation displays what's called finite escape time. And if you go into the lecture notes or just try for yourself, try and solve this differential equation, you'll be able to actually find an explicit solution um, for these curves in this case. Um, but the, the real point here is that for depending on the initial condition, there will be times in the future for which this um, differential equation makes no prediction. So there's no mapping for all times into the future. And this, for this example, it will only make predictions a little way into the future. Um, and this is in contrast with linear systems. Linear systems, you, you got a formula, and that formula held for all times in the future, and it gave you something very predictable and very reliable. But here, if um, you're, if you have particularly bad, <laughs> bad differential equations, you're not guaranteed to get a mapping that exists for all times or even any times. Um, and you also have another problem, um, and that's sort of uniqueness. So actually, you can come up with examples of systems on this form where the solution might not even be unique. That means for the same initial condition and same inputs, there are many possible solutions. And as a mathematical object, there's no way to tell which one of those solutions is the actual prediction that you're interested in. And so the simple example here is x dot is equal to the square root of x, but this time with initial condition at the origin. And if we simulate this, or we actually not, we, we can't simulate uh, in this case. Um, well, we can, but who knows what we'll get. Um, depending, uh, th there's actually multiple solutions. So again, no input, same initial condition. Um, there's a whole bunch of valid solutions, and they all look like uh, this. So it turns out that sort of xa, xb, xc, these are all valid solutions to this differential equation. And if you treat it purely as a mathematical object, which is what you have to do if you want to use this to make predictions about the real world, you have no way to differentiate between these uh, possible solutions. Um, and again, if in the lecture notes we go through this example in a little bit more detail, I would encourage you to not even go there to begin with. Just try and uh, mess around with this differential equation a bit yourself and try and work out why you get these multiple solutions that look like this. Um, so that all seems rather bad. I mean, okay, I told you uh, you shouldn't worry about this mapping uh, not existing, it will never happen in practice. But these differential equations, they look quite simple. Um, and if something so simple can lead to um, such problems, how can we be sure that we're not going to run into any? Well, there are some uh, mathematical conditions that will guarantee 
this won't happen. And they're based on an idea of Lipschitz continuity. Um, we're not going to go into the details now. We may bring up Lipschitz continuity later in the course if we're actually going to use it uh, for the purposes of this course. It's enough to know that there is a condition that will guarantee existence and uniqueness and any sensible model of anything real for sure will give existence and uniqueness so we're just going to forget about it but it maybe it's nice to know that there is um, something that can guarantee it so it's called um, Lipschitz continuity and this implies existence and uniqueness uh, yeah, uniqueness. And it's really quite a mild condition on F and G. So if F and G sat satisfy this thing called Lipschitz continuity, then you're guaranteed um, to have existence and uniqueness. A few other notes before we actually move on and do something uh, a bit more interesting. Um, it's worth to know that this is not the only um, form for nonlinear systems. Um, this is the form that we're going to study, and as I said before, it's pretty general and it'll be more than general enough for our purposes, but maybe it's good to know that um, other, uh, other forms exist and good to be aware of them. Um, so some other forms that it might be good to be aware of. Uh, other forms and those are so-called non-autonomous ODEs. So these are differential, non-autonomous differential equations. Um, just means that they depend on time as well. In fact, every non-autonomous differential equation can be turned into um, an autonomous or a differential equation on this form. So there's not really any extra generality to taking this form, but it's a form that you might see um, in the future. Um, and another form that's maybe more common, especially if you study lots of mechanical systems and this type of thing, is so-called um, implicit form. ODEs. And this is, we replace this equation here by something more general, f of, it's a function of x dot x, um, u, x zero. And you can sort of keep bunging more stuff into the brackets. And instead of requiring the function to have a particular form up here, um, a slight, you can gain slight more, a slight bit of extra generality by allowing the function to also act on x dot. Um, and this is quite natural when you study mechanical systems, but um, it's, it, this will be more, more than enough to start exploring all of these interesting nonlinear behaviors, so we're just going to stick with this for the rest of the course, um, unless we say otherwise. <laughs>